Hi, welcome to Mix and Jam, a channel about game development experimentation. And today's project is going to be a little bit different because it will be entirely built using Game Builder Garage as the game engine. Game Builder Garage is a game that Nintendo has developed that serves as a tool for people to create their own games. In it, you make connections between creatures called Nodon to build the logic and behaviors of your game. And in a classic mix and jam fashion, where I recreate mechanics from other games as a way to practice my game development skills, I decided to use Game Builder Garage for a similar approach by recreating three mini games from Super Mario Party, Sizzling Stakes, Popping Spree, and Fuzzy Flight School. Let's start by breaking down the steps of the Sizzling Stakes minigame recreation. First, I needed to figure out how to implement some proper motion control to tilt the cooking pan and then work on the cooking logic to detect the completion of each side of the meat cube. I started by creating the cooking pan by adding a cylinder object node on connected by two other box objects and having one of them painted. To add motion control to the project, I added a right hand node on which allows you to use your Joy-Con controller to point and grab objects. I had to make sure that only the colored box object was grabbable so that the right hand node on would only grab the pen's handle and pivot the motion movement from it. To build the actual meat cube, I used an extending object node that is basically a resizable cube and had it overlaid on a smaller regular box object that would represent the cooked meat. This structure would allow me to reveal the cooked meat by reducing the size of the extending object node on. Since the extendable object only scales proportionally, I had to simplify the project's gameplay by only requiring three sides to be completed. Then I added three touch sensor node ons to the cube meat so that I could detect when each side of it was touching the pan. When touching the pan, I made the touch sensor start a logic that had a small time interval before actually starting to add to a counter node on that after reaching a certain amount would reduce the size of the extending object. After implementing the same logic for all the cube sides, I added a text object that tracked the lapse time before completion. Finally, I added some objects to the environment to get a visual similar to the original minigame and polished up the experience with some effect node ons and the end screen. Okay, so now let's check the steps for the bopping spree minigame recreation. First, I needed to implement a basic hit detection, then the logic that would select a random target on the stage, and finally the addition of multiplayer gameplay. First thing I did was to add a person node and have it activate the punch action with the signal of a button node. Then I created a sphere object and implemented its hit detection by using the AND node on to send a signal only when the player is punching and is also being detected by a touch sensor node on. Then I connected the sphere with another sphere by using a slide connector node on to be able to move one of them on the Z axis. I made it so that when the sphere was hit, a timer node on would send a signal with a certain duration to a counter node on that adds up until one and then bounces back to zero, allowing the sphere to go back and forth on its slide connector. With this, I added the rest of the spheres and started working on the logic for selecting a random sphere to be the target object. For this, I used a random node on to generate a random number and send its signal to every sphere's block of logic. If that sphere had a constant value equal to the random number signal, it would remove its color provided by a texture node on until it was hit back again, which in that case would add up to the player score and generate another random number. To make the visuals of the project better, I used the world node on and changed the object's appearance to neon. Then, for the multiplayer, I started duplicating the logic for the other side of the ring. But at this point, I found a major issue with the project. Since the hit detection was only considering the player's proximity and a generic hit, it would create the scenario where one player could hit other spheres if the other players were touching them. 
So to solve this, I had to create unique identifiers for the players by parenting a unique fancy object to them and having more touch sensors to identify those individually. The only problem being, I was reaching the limits of no dots that I could use in the project. So I had to start reutilizing common no dots by creating more connections from one single output, which made the project's editor screen a big mess. Nonetheless, I was lucky enough to get the project done with only one node on under the maximum limit. Finally, let's go over the steps for the Fuzzy Fly School minigame recreation. First, I needed to create the basic spaceship gameplay to then implement the automatic door mechanism and finish things up by working on the level design and populating the scene with enemies. To represent the player's spaceship, I added a UFO character node onto the project and made it face the forward direction of the camera. When trying to move the UFO sideways, the game automatically rotates the character to face that direction. So to fix this, I had to parent it to a moving object node on and change its X and Y values instead. Then I added a constant velocity to make the spaceship move forward. When trying to parent the camera to the player, I noticed that the camera would constantly try to follow its X and Y position. So I basically created another UFO that was invisible with the same forward velocity so that the camera could follow it while remaining fixed in a position. Then I added some alien objects that would collide with the player and damage the spaceship. For the moment of the collision, I made the player blink for a while by balancing the value of an empty texture node on with the output from a counter node on. I also added a flag node on to basically deactivate hits for the same duration as the blink, creating a little cooldown for the player. To add more impact to the hit, I made the camera node on shake by slightly modifying its rotation. Then I implemented the UI of the game which also had to be parented to another invisible UFO in order for it to follow the player. For every spaceship hit, a counter nodon would count up and change the current texture nodon based on the amount of hits. When it reached zero, it would destroy the main player. Then I created the automatic door mechanism by creating two box objects and connecting them with another centered box using a slide connector. Then using a touch sensor node on signal, the slide connector value would count up, fully moving the box out of the way. At this point, it was just a matter of finishing the level design by creating enemy patterns and also using more texture node ons to paint the environment. And here's the result of the three minigame recreations compared to their original inspiration. This was kind of a crazy experiment and it did take me quite a while to make these products but I think that the end result made it all worth it. I'll be providing more info and the codes to download the minigames on the description of this video. And if you're new here, this channel is full of game mechanic recreations that serve as a learning method for the community. While I usually use Unity as my engine of choice, it's always useful to try out new things and force yourself to solve problems in new ways. And if you like this kind of content, consider subscribing to the channel. Lastly, a huge thanks to those who support me on Patreon, including these top tier supporters. And with that, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.